Closed captioning for the Casey Malone Show is sponsored by Hunter Stevens Land Title Agency. Integrity, service, and commitment you can trust. Oh, yeah. Casey Malone is serving up local. It's time for the stories of our region, the tastes, the sights, the sounds, and the people in and around the valley. Get ready for some local flavor on the Casey Malone Show. Today, it's a visit with the conductor of the Youngstown Symphony, and I prepare butterfly smelts. Such a treat. But first, get ready for the upcoming Five Squared Art Show at the Boardman Y. Suzanne Gray is the Arts and Humanities Coordinator here at the Boardman Y, and we're here for the big fine art sale. It's called Five Squared, and Five Squared refers to the size, the size. of the artwork. Five inch by five inch. And the sale of the artwork will be? $25, five squared. squared. <laughs> now, where did you come up with this idea? This is really clever. Well, thank you. Um, Five Squared is new to this area, but my daughters and I used to go to a show in New York City called Postcards from the Edge. And it was similar, but they were postcard size, four mm-hmm. by six. Uh, so when, you know, a few years after we'd been there, I said, well, we could just do that out at the Y. And the first year I was a little bit leery. I thought nobody's going <laughs> to donate art because all of the art is donated to us. Mm-hmm. Um, the first year I think we got. 380 pieces. That's quite a bit, that was, though. Yes, it was incredible. You know, the next year we got more. Last year we had really a lot more, and it's down a bit this year, but the quality is so good this year. And where do the proceeds go? They go to our Art Reach program, which is uh, taking art to student to kids out at the rescue mission, daybreak, we're starting to look at the needle's eye, just different areas where kids don't have a chance to have art or go to art classes. So we provide teachers and supplies that go out to them. Now, like mediums, mm-hmm. I mean, a- any medium is accepted Any here. Any medium, and I was gonna say two-dimensional, but we have some three-dimensional things, as long as you can adhere it to a five inch by five inch piece of something. So it could be a canvas, it could be, you know, yes. art paper, yes. photographs. It could be a photograph, anything. it could be, we have some textile here, we have a weaving, um, anything at all. Anything that you can imagine that can be five inches by five inches, we will accept as long as it's family friendly. <laughs> and like, look at this, that's like really like do- I know, and dolly that's, that's from Australia. That is a piece that came from Australia. It's beautiful. Yes. And then, I, I mean, this is interesting, Isn't that too. so cool? And that artist is, is a photographer. This year, he decided he was going to try something different, and that was what he came up with. He has several pieces here as well. I mean, and that needlepoint, that, know, is, that, that is serious artwork. I, I mean, it's that really is beautiful. a lo- very time-consuming. Somebody painted a portrait of me, and it's I over know. on the other side, so yeah. I'm going to buy that you one You better for buy sure. that one yes. for sure. But I, I myself, <laughs> because I'm in charge of this, I can't buy anything until after... after really? Even people. if you try to get in the lottery? Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's a little fishy. They would be saying, I don't know, I don't know. And then, I mean, so the opening reception and the first day for purchase... February 5th, the opening reception is from 1 to 2.30. Sales start at 2.30. I mean, many people will be coming up during the next week and a half saying, I want to buy this piece or that piece. We do not start selling until 2.30 on February 5th. Is it crazy? It is. I mean, that must be a lot. Are they running around grabbing them? I mean, you know. Yeah, what we do is we put... There's some cool (laughs) stuff there. We have the reception and people are eating and there's music. Um, And then we put blue tape on the floor, you know, like back. And people have to stand behind the blue line. (laughs) (laughs) And then at 2.30, they can go and and they don't grab their piece. They grab the little post-it note that's got a number on it. You see each piece has a post-it note next to it. But for those who really, really want a better chance. We sell raffle tickets, so 10 people, if their raffle ticket is chosen, they can go up ahead of time. Only 10. So it's like a lottery. Yes, for, and you for get 10 your people. chance with first right. 10. Right. But wow, after, I mean, after those, yeah, yeah, after the first 10 are gone, 
some people come in and they, <laughs> they, they see an artist that they love and they want that piece because mm -hmm. they know the artist. Some people come in and are just, they're drawn to something. Something that's speaks just, to them, yeah. Yes, yes. And, I and think, then you say so you can't overbid it. You can't yeah. keep, you know, nope. upping the cost. $25. Um, if it's an adult piece of work, it's $25. If it's a kid piece, then it's $10. And we have a lot of grandparents and parents who yeah. come in and buy their, their children's art. Um, so it's anybody and everybody can participate. No matter how well, young no, or old. Well, no, at that price point, it is very fair. Well, yes, yes. And uh, so many people, when we start hanging it, say, oh, man, could I now donate? And I'm like, yeah. yes, we will take art right up until the last minute. So, really, we have through the 5th of February. You do. Um, probably in the next few days is when the program will be made up, so your name won't be in You'll the program. You'll be in the addendum. <laughs> you will not be in the original program, but right. you will be listed. Right. But uh, your, and your art will be shown, and uh, we love that. We, the why is all-inclusive. You know, we are about community, mm -hmm. and so all of our art shows are very inclusive to anyone who wants to participate. It doesn't matter if you're a professional or an amateur. It doesn't matter. As, as long as you are family friendly, we want to show your art here. The Casey Malone Show will be right back with more local flavor. Here at the Magic Tree Pub and Eatery with owner Phil Rita and Chef Tank. Been on field trips. I know from where you get your food. And always, I'm never disappointed by your menu. What do we have coming up? Okay, that's our Magic Monster Burger. It has two eight ounce patties and some Walnut Hill Farms pork belly on it with a little bit of pecan jam. We have our new pepperoni pretzel roll with house made marinara. We have our award winning bacon jam burger with premium pastured meats meat on it and we also have our pot roast and of course our house pretzels it all sounds so amazing casey i am so proud of our kitchen team for the pride they take in making everything from scratch and supporting local farmers it's what makes magic tree live up to who we are and that's a place where people can eat drink and celebrate couldn't have said it better myself <laughs> Here at the Upstairs, we cater to everyone. When you come through the door, I treat you as though you're my friend. So there's all kinds of options here at the Upstairs. There's something on that menu for everyone. Great food, friendly service, very clean restaurant. There's a lot of restaurants, a lot of good restaurants in our community. So I always feel honored when someone comes here. I want everybody coming through that door to leave here with a good experience. Mayflower Wollum is your full-service independent insurance agency for what matters most. Home, auto, life, boat, RV, umbrella. We'll find the right product at the right price for your family. Mayflower Wollum with three locations to serve you. At the Vein Center in MedSpa, we realize the serious health issue varicose veins can cause. We know it's more than just cosmetic. We provide you with caring and personal service in a clean and friendly atmosphere. All vein procedures are done in our office during convenient and flexible hours by a medical doctor with over 20 years experience. The Vein Center in MedSpa also offers fillers and neurotoxin procedures, hydrofacials, and laser hair removal services. Call the Vein Center in MedSpa for a free consultation. See why our patients leave satisfied. Now accepting Anthem and Highmark. Five Buck Burger Mondays at Sadie's Place. Inside the Best Western, Route 46, Austin Town. Part of growing up in Youngstown is growing up with Rolly Brothers Markets. Even friends who have moved out of town come to shop and say hi when they're home for a visit. And my family has always shopped at Rolly's, and today they are still my favorite grocery store. My recipes depend on the best ingredients, and that's why I get them at Rolly's, where you'll always find the freshest food at the best prices. Rooley Brothers is a proud sponsor of the KC Malone Show. The quality that customers have come to expect is true local flavor. You are going to love this cooking segment. 
One of my favorite things is the butterfly fried smelts. I absolutely love them. I always call them Newcastle smelts. Because when I'd go to restaurants in Newcastle like Pegley's or the Crane Room or Medora's, they're light, they're opened up. They're almost like eating a potato chip. And I saw some smelts and I bought the bag. They're cleaned, heads off, and I tried to make them at home and they just didn't taste right. So I was discussing this with my friend Anna from La Rocca's, and she says, well, you have to remove that spine. Lights go on and I figured out that secret. So I've been removing the spine and boy, are these delicious. You are going to love this recipe. It's really easy. Smelts are not just for Christmas Eve. You can make these every day of the year and everyone will love them. So let's get started and we're gonna make the butterfly fried smelts today. For this recipe, you'll need one pound bag of frozen clean smelts, two eggs beaten with one eighth cup of water, one cup of all purpose flour, one cup of cornmeal, one tablespoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of Cajun seasoning, optional, half teaspoon of salt, half teaspoon of fresh ground black pepper, canola or peanut oil for frying, one gallon size storage bag, a half cup of fresh chopped parsley for garnish and lemon wedges. I've already cleaned some of the smelts. There's probably about 50 to 60 smelts per pound bag, two to three inches long. It's a little tedious, but once you get the hang of it, it moves very quickly. So what we'll do is start with a fork. Now you take the back, it's already partially opened, and then I just fling it open all the way with the fork. And then beginning at the fatter part where the head was, you just use the fork tine to take it and strip out that spine. See, right there? And then I just lay them on a paper towel to dry. So now that we've gotten the bones out of there, uh, the easiest way to do it is almost shake and bake style. I just get a bigger bag and I like the fine cornmeal. So use a cup of that, cup of flour. Then I'm going to use, now I like a little spice. So I put some of my Slap Your Mama in. You do not have to do that if you don't want any spice but I do like the taste of the garlic, so I'm using garlic powder. And then, oh, about a half teaspoon or so of salt. You can always add more when they come out of the fryer. And then, of course, you know me, I love my fresh ground pepper. So now we just take that and shake it all up to get it mixed thoroughly. I believe this is the easiest way to do it, rather than on a plate or in a bowl, and then you just throw it away. All right, so you can add milk if you'd like, but I think just a little bit of water to the egg wash, and just make sure you beat it really well so it's real light and airy. See all the bubbles? You just want that really foamy, okay? Now, I usually do this about 10 at a time, a dozen at a time. And then I just drop them right there in the wash. And let them soak around there a little bit. Do, 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 do. And then pull them out one at a time. Try to leave them open, let them drip. And then you just drop them right in the bag. I mean, it's a little messy, not that messy. We'll do it that way. My hands, ugh. All right, and then you just go. And use the finer cornmeal, because it sticks a little better. There you go. Now we'll take them out. And you open them up. See, and they're all covered nicely. And you just lay them right back down on another paper towel. You do go through quite a few paper towels here. But make sure that both sides, they didn't close up and they get all the good stuff on them. I'm gonna use canola oil to fry this, but peanut oil works well too. 
and you want the oil temperature to be about 160 to 175. And if you don't have a thermometer to measure the heat, you can also use a wooden spoon and just stick it in. And when you see the bubbles form, that means you have temperature. Good enough for frying. So now we have our oil ready to go. I like to start with the skin side down. So there we go. Throw these in. They're only going to be about two minutes on this side and about a minute on the other side. These cook very quickly. You don't want to crowd them. And the minute you see them start to brown, we'll flip them. Restaurant quality smelts, and they were super easy. I absolutely love these. Lemon, a little bit of parsley on top, and you are good to go. Now, some people like the cocktail sauce, but I think it fights with the fresh, clean taste of the smelts. So I squeeze some lemon, and you know what else I like for a little more heat? I like the green Tabasco sauce. And uh, I put that on a little bit of mine. And I just think it makes them that much more fun. Now remember, if you don't want the uh, hot sauce, you don't have to add it. Mm. These are delicious. Great for a crowd. Make them in batches just for uh, a few people. But people that say they don't like smelts, make sure they try these because they are going to love them. And with smelts, I think a nice cold beer is in order as a pairing. I'm using the uh, Modelo Especial. I really like the Mexican beers. And this is perfect palate cleanser to wash down those delicious smelts. Mm. If you need the recipe, just go to my website, caseymaloneshow.com, for the fried butterfly smelts. You are going to love them as much as I do. Mm. Cheers. The Casey Malone Show will be right back with more local flavor. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Bernard. I've been giving the people of our valley free advice for 30 years, and my message has never changed. If you're involved in an automobile accident, don't try to handle it yourself. Call a lawyer. A lawyer will be your representative, dealing with doctors, medical insurance, and all the red tape that you may encounter. Hiring a lawyer doesn't mean you'll end up in court, and remember, there are no upfront fees on personal injury cases. That's good advice. Need a lawyer? Learn more at ElizabethBernardLaw.com. To own a business where your name's on the window can be pretty cool. That's my family. My name is Danny Catullo, and I'm the owner of Catullo Prime Meats. My grandfather started the business in 1962. I was able to take our old style butcher shop and bring it out to the new age using e-commerce to get our products to more customers. When we started shipping, there was not a ton of information out there. That's where we really worked with FedEx so they could be able to help us with our perishable shipping. We were taking on new purchases that we never had to make before. Boxes, coolers, ice packs, anything that was involved around shipping. So we can no longer do this with the cash that we had on hand. So because of the plum card from American Express and all of its benefits, it was a natural fit to help grow our business. When someone calls and lets you know that you made their dinner, that's satisfaction that you can't get anywhere else. wonderful husband. He stuck with me through thick and thin, and he's a fantastic father. So when he needed long-term care, not just any place would do, we did our research. Everyone said, trust the name you know, Briarfield. With all those locations, there's always one close. That made it easy for me and the kids to visit more often, Briarfield. Trust the name you know, Briarfield. Proudly serving the Valley for over 20 years. Mayflower Wollum is your full-service independent insurance agency for your business. We work with several companies so you have choices for your insurance needs. Commercial properties, professional liability, bonding, and general. Trust Mayflower Wollum. 
The Kamara family is thankful. Thankful to be a part of many great organizations within our local community. Organizations like Making Kids Count. We rely on donations from local residents and businesses to make our mission possible in the Valley. Kamara Jewelers has been a sponsor of us for several different events that we've had. We're so thankful for the community that we live in and could not do this without them. Join Kamara Jewelers in supporting Making Kids Count and make a difference today. Four for five till six. Happy hour at Sadie's Place inside the Best Western, Route 46, Austin Town. Maestro Flesher is passionate about music and the Youngstown Symphony. Under his direction, the symphony offers diverse musical programs, including the pop series, children's education, and multicultural music. Flesher's enthusiasm for all types of music has him in high demand for guest conductor positions. In addition to Youngstown, Flesher also conducts the Hudson Valley Philharmonic and the Anchorage Symphony. So being the director of the Youngstown Symphony, being from Canton, it must be wonderful that your family can come and see you perform. It is. It was a big, one of the big components that attracted me to this job. Uh, I actually came as a guest conductor when, when they reopened Stambaugh Auditorium. Mm -hmm. I conducted that concert. And I have to tell you, coming through here, I didn't really know what to expect with the Youngstown Symphony. And I was so pleasantly surprised that the Youngstown Symphony is as good as they are. Actually, very good. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm proud to say I get to conduct some really great orchestras. You know, San Francisco a couple times a year, been, I've conducted the Boston Pops. So I know what a great orchestra sounds like. Yes. Uh, and we are really lucky to have Youngstown. So when the job opened up and Isaiah Jackson left, mm -hmm. and you know, my parents are getting older, and uh, as you know, my daughter's uh, 13 and we only get to, back then we would get to visit in Ohio maybe once a year, if that. Mm -hmm. Like, wow, this is fantastic. <laughs> So I, I got on the phone to my agent, I said, get me that job. <laughs> Was your family really, um are, are your parents classical musicians? My Where father was. Uh, my father was a drummer in a, jam, in a swing band, mm -hmm. traveled on the road, and was also timpanist in the Canton Symphony. Uh, uh, and he probably would have made a life as a musician, mm -hmm. uh, but as a young man, you know, like so many young men, he spent more money than he made. And my grandfather, uh, uh, who I love dearly, uh, said, enough, I'm not sending you another nickel. <laughs> Get a Come home dog. and join. He owned a shoe store in Canton, yes. Ohio, Fleischer Shoe Store. Mm -hmm. And so my dad quit uh, his career as a, a, a drummer and a percussionist and moved back to Canton, and, uh, uh, but still played timpani in the Canton Symphony for a couple of years and taught drums out of the house for many years. Uh, um, so, and I know for sure he regrets to this day not continuing oh. his life as a musician and absolutely lives vicariously through me. You also conduct the Hudson Valley um, Philharmonic, Philharmonic yes. and the Anchorage Symphony. Anchorage Symphony, yes. How different are those three music They're organizations? They're pretty different. They're all three very different parts of the country and uh, very different cities and very different organizations. Youngstown and Poughkeepsie are more similar. Yes. Uh, uh, but you know, Alaska is kind of a kind of a funny place. They have a real taste for adventure up there. I mean, if you move to Alaska, yes. you're moving there for at least some little part of your mind for adventure. Right. How do you engage the youth? Because I really think, you know, with arts funding down and just that maybe they're not hearing it in the home. How do you get them excited about classical music? Uh, we try on many levels to do that. Uh, we play uh, young people's concerts for nearly, nearly 5,000 school kids every year, mm -hmm. right here in this theater. So we try to tie it into some kind of curriculum that's either scientific or literacy or math or you know something like that. Uh, that's a big part of what we do. And my wife, Heidi, who was a professional stand-up comic, comes to Youngstown to narrate those shows. Yes. And we write them together so they're fun, they're participatory. She was also a music major, she sings well, she danced and sang on Broadway. Well, didn't you do an, uh, uh, didn't you do like an award-winning version of Peter and the Wolf? I yes. I read that in your book. Heidi was not actually involved in that. Yes, it, it, we won a, a Newsweek Magazine Parents' Choice Award. Uh, and it, this was the early CD-ROMs. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was one of the earliest CD-ROMs, I think it came out in 94 or something like that in cooperation with IBM. Uh, that actually had streaming video. Of course, shortly thereafter, they all did, but this one was fairly groundbreaking. Uh, but yeah, Heidi and I have done our Young People's Concerts. We, they, they started at the Kennedy Center when I was the assistant conductor there. Mm -hmm. We've done them all over the country. We're very proud of those. Well, you have performed, you know, when I was reading your biography, uh, John Cale, I'm a huge fan. Me too. Ani DeFranco, 
I mean, Phenomenal. best thing out of Buffalo. Oh my ever. God, yes. When she Next to the wings, it's <laughs> Ani DeFranco. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, John Densmore from The Doors. Amazing. Uh, Garth Hudson, Natalie Merchant. I mean, you've really, how do you, uh, do they approach you? How, how do you begin production? It's a little with that? different in each case. Uh, um, with Ani, the Buffalo Philharmonic uh, uh, approached me to con I conducted there uh, and on and off for some years. They knew I had a, a you know an appetite for rock fusion, so I actually did the arrangements for mm -hmm. Ani as well, which was interesting because she doesn't read a note of music, but she layered up all these cool sounds and things like that and sent it off to me and said, "Can you do something like this?" And I basically just realized her arrangement for symphony. Yeah. Got the symphony to sound like that. Are you getting the support you need? Is the symphony no. here in Youngstown? Are I'm they... gonna just answer honestly, no. I don't think folks in this town know what a gem they have here with the musicians of this orchestra. They're, they're damn good. And this space, and we're trying to get the word out as much as we can, thank you so much for your coverage. Uh, um, but no, we could use more people in the seats here. Yeah. Uh, yes, we could use more donations, but at the end of the day, we need more folks to buy tickets. I would love to see more people come to our concerts. Yeah, more butts in the seats. More butts in seats, yes. <laughs> The Casey Malone Show is sponsored in part by Denise and John York and the DeBartlow Corporation.